What's up, guys? Double React here, back with another video. Today we watching uh, video from X Crispy, Vladdy, and Paler, uh, guys. I've been uh, wanted to watch this uh, series for a while on X Crispy. I've been looking at it, been seeing it. So, well, we both been seeing it, but both been wanting to recommend to it. Not so, really. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys let us know, guys, do you want do you like this full screen or you like the old screen better? Just let us know in the comments, uh, guys. Do you like this screen better when we like this and the video like this? Or the other way we we uh we used to do it. So let us know in the comments, but guys, if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, that like button, and uh also uh comment below with videos you want to react to. Without further, let's get into the video. From him sits a man infamous throughout the land. Some call him a hero, the only man willing to defend Eastern Europe from that's, the armies of the fine. Ottoman Sultan, while others say he's a monster, a fiend. Who impales men, women, and children on long spikes and feeds what he do? beneath their jerking corpses? That would and according to one story, he dips his bread in the warm blood that splatters his plate. Uh, this legend what? in front of the artist has a face that matches the stories: a sharp nose, heavy eyebrows, and bulging green eyes. For over a decade, the man has been a captive here, but soon he'll be unleashed again. The Vlad the Third, son of the dragon Dracula. What? Thanks so much to Morning Brew for helping bring this history to life. Welcome, friends. Today, we will be discussing Vlad the That is also messed up. October theme too. Dracula, a 15th century Romanian ruler who... What? What? I'm doing a bit. All right, all right. Uh, take the bangs out. Uh, it kind of hurt anyway. Actually, it's for the best, because as fun as it is to make vampire jokes, the true story of Vlad the Impaler is actually more interesting, revealing, and dare I say bloody, than the literary counterpart that stole his name. Vlad III, later known as the Impaler, is by far the most famous Romanian historical figure. But he's famous in a strange sense. In his homeland, he's a national hero, seen mm. as a champion of independence and resistance against Ottoman expansion. But outside Romania, he's mostly perceived as the psychopath and sadist that inspired Bram Stoker's Dracula. In fact, of course he's gonna be like that because the people outside, yeah. down, outside looking in gonna think like he a murderer, yeah. but he, but in inside they say he doing it for his country. Yeah. Word of his violent deeds spread even <clears throat> during his lifetime, as printmakers in Germany churned out exaggerated or invented stories about him. In other words, centuries before Stoker's birth, Vlad's story was already intertwined with myth. Which makes him difficult to talk about. So just chasing that A and want to save time, Grammarly makes editing one click simpler. We can help make complex. Just to state this up front, our plan with this series is to first discuss the historical Vlad and then okay. do a separate episode on the complex legacy of his memory. Where yes, we promise we'll talk about all the Dracula stuff. <laughs> because actually, Dracula is Rob's favorite classic novel. So if you ever wanted us to do a special, oh, I don't know, let's call it a extra literature on the book sometime in the future, let us know in the comments and we'll see what we can do. But okay, back to history. To understand Vlad the Man, we have to go back to the time of his father, Vlad the Second, known as Dracul, or Dracul. the Dragon. Vlad Dracul okay, got that name after Sigismund, King of Hungary, and later the Holy Roman Emperor, made him a member of the Order of the Dragon, a chivalric order that vowed to defend Eastern Europe from the Ottoman Empire. These two, they were close. See, Vlad the Second grew up as a hostage at Sigismund's court. What? A common practice then, which was half <laughs> like going to boarding school and half like, well, being a hostage. Vlad's father, the ruling prince of Wallachia, had agreed to be a vassal of the Hungarian king, with Vlad living within decapitating distance of the Hungarian throne to keep his father honest. I.e., betray me and I kill your kid. Yet oh. Sigismund was pretty chummy with Vlad, educating him and so yeah, I want to know, did he know that though? Did, uh, Probably not. Vlad know that. That's crazy. Showing him favor. Because Sigismund's ideal outcome wasn't for Vlad to die. It was for him to succeed his father and rule Wallachia as a close ally of Hungary. But Puppet why? State. I mean, why would Hungary, much larger than it is today, put so much effort into controlling a relatively small principality? Well, as they say in real estate, location, location, location. Yep. Wallachia was, essentially, the buffer zone for a major conflict brewing in Eastern Europe. The expansionist Ottoman Empire had rolled over the Balkans, and the then powerful Kingdom of Hungary wanted a friendly ruler in Wallachia to keep it free of Ottoman control and the famous Ottoman Janissaries off Hungary's borders. 
But the throne of Wallachia was a bit of a mess, and mm. keeping anyone on it was a big project. Vlad Dracul's own father had been prince twice before he died in 1418, Oof. and five other of Vlad's cousins and half brothers had also sat on the throne. It's been a lot of people on that throne, so some multiple times. That's because monogamy was more of a suggestion for Wallachian nobles rather than a strict rule. And oh, they have to. Marry. An enormously twisted family tree of backstabbing and usurpation <laughs> that meant the average time on the throne. But that's everybody back in time backstabbing yeah. trying to get the, to, uh, the uh, cr crown. <laughs> During Vlad Dracul's lifetime was only around two to three years. But it wasn't until 1434 that Sigismund thought about a regime change. That's, of course, when one of Vlad's brothers, currently the prince, sent envoys to pledge allegiance to the Ottoman Sultan, Murad II. In response, Sigismund gave Vlad a bunch of money to raise an army of exiled Wallachian boyars, basically the noble class, to seize the throne. He succeeded in 1436, mostly because his brother died of an illness, and Vlad's first act was to cancel the unratified treaty his predecessor had drew up with the Ottomans. Then, two things happened. First, the Ottomans invaded in response. Yeah. <laughs> then, a month later, Sigismund died, triggering a Hungarian uh -oh. internal crisis that meant Wallachia wasn't going to be getting any of its promised military aid. So, that's like the Dracula worst possible decided problem. to forego that whole Order of the Dragon, Battle the Turks thing, pledged fealty to Murad II, and guided an Ottoman army into Hungary. But that Ottoman force was defeated, leaving the Hungarians furious with Vlad. See, the problem that would bedevil Vlad, and his son Dracula as well, was that Wallachia was a small country between big powers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Siding with one, invited the other to either attack him militarily, or to try to put another relative on the Wallachian throne. In 1442, Vlad took a meeting with John Hunyadi, a Hungarian vassal and prince of Transylvania, remember him, he's important, who okay. convinced Vlad to withdraw his support from a planned Ottoman invasion of Transylvania. Vlad, hoping to stay neutral, didn't join the invasion, but did let Murad's forces cross Wallachia to attack Hunyadi. Hmm. Now, it was Murad II who was furious with Vlad, and when he called him no for an explanation, <laughs> he jailed him along with... Ain't no win-win for him, I know, bro. Right? Like, either way, he's doomed. ...his two youngest sons, only releasing him to reclaim his throne once he'd sworn not to act against Ottoman interests and pledged to send 500 children a year to join the elite Ottoman Janissary Corps. Oh, but when he was released from Ottoman custody, he left a few things behind. Namely, his 11-year-old son, Vlad III, known by his preferred honorific of Dracula, or Son of the Dragon. Oh, that's right. Just like Daddy Dragon got ditched as a hostage at Sigismund's court, this little dragon got left as say. a hostage with the Ottomans, along with his brother Radu, who was around seven. And these two brothers couldn't have been more different. Radu got along just fine at the Ottoman court. He was charming, intelligent, and good-looking, eventually even earning the title Radu the Handsome. He befriended <laughs> the Sultan's son, Mehmed II, and his studies in Turkish, the Quran, logic, mathematics, and philosophy flourished. Vlad, on the other hand, didn't get on so well. Neither charming nor handsome, he got none of the fawning attention Radu received, and his defiant attitude meant he regularly felt the lash of a tutor's whip. Yet while they were generally well-treated, they were also in danger. A fact brought home when the brothers saw two boys, fellow Eastern European hostages, blinded with red-hot irons as punishment for communicating with their father. As what? always, Vlad's bulging green eyes saw everything <laughs> oh in the Ottoman court, memorizing its functions and ways. He observed military drills close up and was raised along with Mehmed, gaining first-hand knowledge of a future enemy. He observed the terror tactics the Ottoman states used to keep vassals and populations in line. He's and he learned learning, another man. hard lesson, that politics <clears throat> was impersonal. Betraying your family was okay, if it gave you more power. Then one day, a messenger arrived, saying that Vlad and Radu's privileges were being stripped. They would now live in harsher conditions, separated from the court. But it seems their father, the dragon, knowing it would mean the death of his sons, had joined John Hunyadi in a crusade to eject the Ottomans from Europe, which didn't go very well. The crusaders marched to total defeat, and then in the fallout, Vlad Dracul gave confusing signals <laughs> of which side he was actually he, on. He just stuck in between, bro. He resubmitted himself as a vassal to Sultan Murad, allowing Vlad Dracula and Radu, who he was surprised to learn were still alive, to come home. I see you still doing yeah, it for his sons, though. Yeah. I get that one. Surprise you on sugar. Wakanda?
as I'm sure you've gathered by now, in making this peace, Vlad Dracul had invited war. Because now John Hunyadi stormed into Wallachia, <laughs> hey, hoping to stuck, put a pretender bro. named Vladislav on the Wallachian throne. I bet the because this story really though. needed more guys. Probably not. Forward. Vlad Dracula and Radu the Handsome fled back to the Ottomans, while their eldest brother, who stayed to fight with their father, got caught by a group of rebel boyars, who blinded him with a red-hot poker mm. and buried him alive. And days later, Hunyadi and his men ran down Vlad II in a marsh. The dragon was dead, his throne given to a pretender. Which meant that wow, now, they in did him dirty. it was finally time for young Vlad to enter Wallachia and reclaim what was his. So with military support from the Ottoman Sultan, the son of the dragon marched to his revenge. And Dracula was unleashed. Wow. Ooh, crazy. But they did him dirty because in between, he couldn't, yeah. he couldn't do nothing. Yeah. And and that torture where they blind him with like a they, iron that, that was his, they, oldest, his oldest son. That mm -hmm. was him. No, Vlad. Oh. No, they said, ain't that his oldest son? No, that was him. That and they buried him the alive. Ass. Oh, well, I'm confused right there. So, okay, so I just, but I still though they poking people in the eye with hot things and blinding them. That's crazy. So let us know, guys, in the comments what you think of this video. Uh, if you want to see part two, like the video, guys. Uh, tell us below. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys next video.